Hi guys, Adam Butte from Authentic Sales. Welcome to our five day sales challenge where we're gonna be talking to you each day on a different topic that's critically important in order for you to achieve success, long-term success in your business. Today's um, episode, we're gonna be talking in depth around leadership, the components that are critically important for you to establish yourself as a leader in your business and in the industry that you're in, in order for you to scale and grow a saleable asset. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've brought Adam back again. Adam, good to see you, my man. How are you, brother? It's great to be back. Always exciting. Now, obviously, you did uh, give us a lot of value in the last episode that we did. And we were talking about simple sales strategies that will grow your business. And if you haven't checked out that episode, um, I actually um, encourage you to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. That way, you're not going to be missing out on um you know valuable content like this no just as a recap um for those that are watching this for the first time adam is an international published author a sales expert a course curator who actually helps growth mindset and purpose biz, uh, purpose driven business owners to scale their business by increasing their sales their profits their systems and creating more time um you know to work on their businesses instead of working in them so that they have a sellable asset of real value now when we invited adam for the first time um he really brought in a lot of value so much that we wanted to um ask him back not only once but we're gonna ask him for a series of five videos where he's going to be taking us through um you know one of his processes that actually helps people create a sellable asset and of real value now amongst the things that he's going to be talking about um today we're going to be sent uh centering around leadership so if you're a business owner that's just getting started with your business or you are on the way to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable i encourage you to subscribe to our channel because i got a question for you what actually makes a good leader is it charisma is it courage is it foresight or is it all of the above let me tell you something when you're starting your business you may be just working by yourself but there comes a point when you're supposed to be working with other people so as a leader how do you become a better leader and if you're like me you probably read a lot of books you listen to podcasts you attend a few conferences or you just ask people that actually know a lot more about leadership like adam here now adam you know i could go on and on and on and on and on but that's not a really good leadership quality leaders should actually listen more than they speak you tell us a little bit how about how you help leaders um you know create a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable or a sellable asset of real value yeah, it's a good question. Thanks, Prosper. Glad to be back here again. Um, just listening to what you were talking about there, um, there's a big difference between management and leadership. Now, most people that fall into business, and I say fall into business because there's not too many that strategically plan to start something up. It's more a matter of, you know what, how does it happen? I've just lost my job. I don't want that to happen again. I'm going to go and do something for myself had an argument with the boss, I don't want to be treated that way anymore, I'm going to go and do something for myself. Or had a few beers with someone, they said, why don't you go and work for yourself, you're really good at what you do, right? So most times people fall into business. And I think when that's the situation, it makes perfectly good sense as to why most businesses are unsellable, right? So um, let's, um, Let's sort of break this down a little bit. I was doing a I was doing a a live the other day, and you'll know these stats, Prosper. Ninety five percent of small businesses fail in their first five years. So for every hundred businesses that start within five years, ninety five are gone. That's a huge statistic. What people don't understand is that of that last five percent only half of them will make it another five years. 
So in 10 years, I can guarantee pretty much every business owner I meet will be out of business. So why is that? You know, firstly, they don't have the end, the end goal in mind. So they're not thinking about their business as a saleable asset. They're not thinking of it as a tangible asset. They're thinking of it as a job. And when you move into it in that job mentality, essentially you're moving into it with that management mentality because that's all you know. You've been managed your whole life. You haven't been led. So you're taking all of your past in with you into something that you're starting for yourself now. And if that's the case, it's never going to work. So, so the first thing we need to do is we really have to understand our why, why we do what we want to do. What, what's the reason for it? You know, is that why, um, is that why monetary? Because if it's just monetary, that's not going to cut it either. Is that why, um, because you want, well, people go into business for three main reasons. They want more time, they want more money, they want more freedom yet small business owners don't have any of those three things. <laughs> so, so when you got to get clearer on the why you're doing what you're doing, and we've got to do it from a greater purpose, not from rocking up every day and doing the work. So it's really getting very clear at the beginning why you're doing it, what you want to achieve from it, where you want to take it, and then the reasons why you want to take it, where you want to take it. Absolutely. That's because, if, you know, if, if you don't have a direction as to um, where you are headed to, how can you lead people to that proverbial promised land? Now, there's something that has happened in your, um, you know, course uh, of or, or in your journey. You know, you've worked in so many significant sales roles and now you are, um, you know, leading your own team and company there. Can you maybe name a person um you know who's had tremendous impact to you as a leader and maybe somebody who's been like a mentor to you and i want us to sort of look at why um was this person so impactful in your life mm, it's a very good question i learned in my very first um commission only job um back in 2000 in melbourne that was in the wealth creation industry we were selling off the plan property investment seminars and we were charging 15 grand for this education back in 2000. And that was a high pressure close, right? So people would come in, we'd give them a one hour presentation, they'd sign the paperwork. Hopefully we'd never see them again. <laughs> so that, that's, that was the strategy. But what I learned back in that day was, um, that was the beginning of my personal development journey. So I got stuck into all of the Tony Robbins stuff, all of the Bob Proctor stuff, all of the Brian Tracy stuff, all the Zig Ziglar stuff, all the Tom Hopkins stuff. Like I spent a lot of money on educating myself. So these people that were not direct coaches were indirect coaches for me because they were teaching me the tools of the trade, first of all, that I needed to learn. So once I got the tool and in sales and in business, the tools of the trade is so much more. What most business owners don't get is that it's the communication that is the most important part of any business. How we communicate with another person will determine um, the results that we get. So if we want to get better results, we have to get better at our communication by getting better at our communication we're educating ourselves with leadership stuff. Yeah. So I invested a, a bucket load of money back then in all that. But then through that journey, I learned also to associate myself with those who I want to become. So I had a picture in my mind as to who I want to be. I need to go out there and find people that have achieved what I'm wanting to achieve so I can fast track that learning directly from those that have done it before. So I've had a lot of mentors over the years that depending on where I was at through my journey would determine who I was gravitating towards, who I was seeking out to help me get to the next level. 
Right now, as an example, I'm speaking with Justin Herald. You know who Justin is? Mm, Have you heard remember. of the name? Yeah. So Justin Herald created the clothing brand um, Attitude. Right. Right. He took that company from zero to thirty million dollars in six years. Good on him. Right. Good so one. I'm right now being mentored by someone who's achieved something that I'm striving to achieve. Yeah. Wow. Um, so that that's the first part about being a leader. A leader is go and find someone else that's done what you wanted to do, that can teach you how to do it yourself firstly, but more importantly, how to teach somebody else to do it secondly. Fantastic. That sounds like, uh, and congratulations on that. I mean, obviously when you learn from other people, you, um, you know, shave a lot of time, uh, money and effort that you would have, um, you know, endeavored into trying to figure it out all by yourself. Now, there's a lot of decisions that a leader has to make, um, you know, especially in the course of running, a, um, you know, a, a, a successful business. What do you reckon are the most important decisions um, that make one um, a good leader within an organization? The first decision is always, um, in my mind, um, do not ask anybody else to do something that you're not prepared to do yourself. Because that's the difference between a leader and a manager. So you ask what makes a good leader? For me, someone who's prepared to roll up their sleeves and do it themselves and is prepared to go in to the chambers with me is someone that I would follow. Someone who tells me to do it but wouldn't be prepared to do it themselves is a manager someone I would never follow. So the first decision is to make sure that you're prepared to do what you ask other people to do first. The second decision that must be made is that all of our decisions moving forward have to be made from our um, future self, not our past self. So a leader's always looking at the future. They're looking to strive. They're looking to evolve. They're looking to grow. They're looking to make change. They're, they're, that's what they do. That's why they're leaders. They're innovators in, in their field. A manager is making the decisions based on what they've known has worked in the past. But if you're working from what works in the past only, then you can't change. And life is all about constant evolution. It's not about constant past. So the decision must be to find people that are prepared to do that and, and you be that person that is that person that does that. Absolutely. And in leadership, self-sabotage is painfully common. Can you touch up a little bit about that? Because a lot of people don't realize that the easiest way to actually undermine their moral core, maybe as a leader, is by betraying you know, their own sort of stated values. How does self-sabotage yeah. um, come in, in when it comes to leadership? Yeah. So the, there's a difference between the, the difference between self-belief and self-sabotage is, is quite is quite big. So the leaders have so much self-belief in the vision that they want to create. So when we're making our decisions based upon that future self person, we have so much belief that what we want to achieve it will be done. How it gets done, we've just got to figure that out along the way on the journey. The self-sabotage is the little monkey chatter that we have going on that says, you've never done that before, Prosper, so why are you even bothering to try? You know you can't do that. If that's going on subconsciously before you even start, you're dead in the water before you even get going because you can't change that thought process. So the leader has that self-belief. If we set a goal, we know what our why is, we're determined to achieve what we want to achieve, we're prepared to roll up our sleeves and go out there and take the action that's required to make it happen, then it will happen. The self-sabotage is, I'm not quite sure I can actually do this, so I'm never going to commit to it 100%. 
if I don't commit to it 100%, everybody else around me knows that I'm not fully invested. So they're never going to follow either. And ultimately, it, it doesn't become a goal. It's just a wish. Absolutely. And you do understand, you know, as a leader, the buck usually stops with you, which means that, you know, sometimes integrity is questioned. Um, how do you make others hold you accountable or how do you maintain your integrity as a leader? Well, you've got a couple of things there in that, in that question, which I really want to sort of delve into a little bit. So the first one's integrity. Um, and the second one is, um, what I hear is do as I do. So there was a study done, um, in 2009, um, in the Harvard university by professor, uh, Dr. Michael Jensen. And Dr. Michael Jensen proved in his thesis that if you do what you say you're going to do, your sales conversion rates will actually increase over 300%. Now, I use this a lot in my training. If you do what you say you're going to do, your conversions go up threefold. Why do you think that happens? You tell me. It's because it's because if if someone knows that you say you're going to do it and you actually are going to do it, they believe in you because this is they, the leadership they're holding you accountable for everything that comes along from what you say, right? Holding you accountable, but there's an underlying knowing that you will be able to deliver. Right. So too often we see people, um, you, you mentioned it before, a good leader is someone that listens. A bad salesperson is someone that talks you into buying. So I wrote in my book that we were given two of these and one of these for a reason. <laughs> Why did That's God it. give us two ears and one mouth, right? It wasn't just for the earrings. It wasn't just to balance out the head. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason for that. So, so that, so people think that they've got integrity, but there's a difference between having integrity and having self integrity. So I'll look at sales trainers and say integrity led processes, big deal. What does that mean? I'm looking for people that have self integrity and self integrity is someone that I know will absolutely follow through on what they say they're going to do. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. That, mm. That's that's integrity. And, and that's, and that's the, the key difference between uh, on how you can really improve your leadership. Because as soon as you demonstrate that to someone prosper, they can, they can guarantee that they know that you're going to do that time and time and time again. So that the, there's no, you know, there's it no has to be done. Absolutely. Great stuff. Now, this is all interesting. And um, what, what are some other attributes that a leader should actually have? Because you did mention the whole listening um, you know, side of things. A, a few people don't quite get it or understand um, what is expected of them. So... The next thing that I think is a critical component of leadership is the intention. What's your intention? Um, and is your intention to serve or is your intention to take? So in business, we see the two models, right? We see people that have the intention to serve our fellow customers we have people that have the intention to take from our customers so who would you rather follow in business would you rather follow somebody who has that intention of serving somebody else and all of their actions are backed by that intention or would you prefer to follow someone whose intentions are to sell just so we can make more profit so when it comes to your leadership skills, the stronger you are at service, the, 
the stronger your clientele will feel that and the more they will follow you in the pursuit of that collaboration for the greater good of them. Understandable. Mm. Yeah. Great stuff. Now, I mean, obviously, since this is the first of a series, um, you know, you might have maybe a system or a process that you already take your clients through. Maybe you could show us a little bit about that. Uh, if not, we can then just direct people to where they can, um, you know, get started with you, especially if they're going to get onto their leadership journey. Yeah, the uh, the system's actually right behind me there in, in the screen. So basically, I, I do have a system that I work people through and all facets of the business. We're talking about creating a saleable asset. So, so the system and that plan that we have there in place is about establishing these foundations across all the platforms in their business. How they can find out more is they can click on that QR code there and that'll take somebody straight into my diary and we can have a chat further about that. Fantastic. I really appreciate it. And we will be putting all the information um, with regards to this in the show notes there so that people can actually get started with you. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, this is one out of five in a series um, you know, of videos that Adam is going to be sharing with us um, when it comes to creating um you know a sellable asset especially when it comes to your business because there's no point in building your business and you become a statistic like what adam mentioned and we definitely want to make sure that um you know you got all the bases covered um when it comes to creating a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable so adam you tell us what will be the next um uh in the series so that people actually get prepared for this so the next thing we're going to talk about is mindset um, and mindset is a crucial component for business. It's pretty straightforward. If you haven't got the right mindset, you're only going to sink yourself faster than anyone else can. So how do we create that mental toughness that's required for you to be able to navigate the ebbs and flows that we see in business on a daily basis? Absolutely. I really appreciate your time on this. And um, if you're watching this and you're gaining value from the series, I encourage you to actually, um, you know, uh, subscribe to this channel or follow Adam because, you know, information like this is very hard to come by. Adam has had successes in his life and he is just um, ready to help us in order for us to create businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Now, till the next time, Adam, thank you for today. Thanks, Prosper.